Five Live Drive. Tony Livesey and Claire McDonald. Now, when you buy a book, how can you be sure that it's been written by the person whose name is on the spine? This evening on Drive, we're going to find out about the world of the ghostwriter, Joshua Lysick has written an awful lot of books, but his name does not appear on the bestsellers list as often as his work. He's now written his own, uh, well, a, a book under his own name called So Good They Call You a Fake. Joshua, hello. Welcome to the BBC. Uh, Tony, I'm pleased to be here with you. Thank you. Talk to me. I mean, I've got loads of questions for you. Let's, let's just get some context first of all. You probably don't want to name names. But what kind of people have you written for or on behalf of, we should say? Yes, it's everywhere from public figures that we all know and love or hate, all the way down to great-grandmother who wanted to share what it was like growing up during the war with her posterity. It's quite a range. Yeah, which makes it ever ever, ever interesting, I guess. How, how, what, 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 do you, what do you judge it on taking up a commission, Joshua? Is it just something that interests you? Is it the amount of money the book might make? How, you know, where, where do you level it? Yes, my favorite projects are those that have civilization-altering potential. That doesn't mean it has to be someone who's famous, but it has to be, from my perspective, a book that has legs. The idea is sticky in a good way, and it can up in the status quo of an industry where things aren't right, or it could be a public figure who's been unfairly maligned and they want to set the record straight. So it's going to be a book that's going to change things for the better. And how do you approach it? Is it the same every time, regardless of the story? You you look for the narrative and try and get into the mind of, of, of the author? How, how do you do it? Yes. In my experience, the best book writers are first and foremost book marketers. They understand what's commercially viable, what's going to work, what's not going to work, and why it's not going to work. And so we have in mind already the book that will sell, and then we spin the story or structure it in such a way as to meet what's most likely going to work. It's it's rather different than I think a lot of people expect where they say, hmm, I want to write a book. What do I want to write a book about? We start with, well, what book on this topic is going to sell? Yeah. That people are going to resonate with. Let's but, write that. But but I guess you 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 you're not you you you're not sat there every day thinking that I need to think of a narrative arc here because it's provided for you. If if you take on the commission, the story is there. You've just got to fashion it. Yes, let's say it's a memoir. We still know that it needs to have the similar reading experience of a novel where there's going to be three acts. There's going to be protagonist. There's going to be an antagonist. There's going to be all the features of a story. And that is known in advance. So interviewing the author is looking for parts of the story that map onto the already chosen, the, the preset structure. And when the books you've written, Joshua, and you've written countless books, are they all in your voice? Could we identify your voice? Or do you try to get into the mind of, of the person themselves and therefore you, you have a different way of, of, of delivering the speech patterns, for example? Yes. The more high profile a public figure is, the more critical it is to their brand control that it sound like them as opposed to, uh, gee, this person obviously had a ghostwriter. Okay, so what they're so, looking for is authenticity. Right. So does that then, is that a level of impersonation? How, how do you begin, to, you're, you're mimicking them. How do you begin to do that? Yes. I describe ghostwriting, among other things, as acting in print, where just as a, an actor or actress would be depicting, a, say, a public figure on the silver screen or on the stage, it's identical where it's my job to portray the author as if I am their author itself, using their own verbatim, their own tells, so to speak, the literary tells, so that you can tell it's them. Yeah, it's an absolute speciality. What Do you do? You often get clients who will say, make me sound more intelligent, Joshua, or, you know, or, or that doesn't seem authentic? Do, do, do people often have those conversations with you? The most common question is in the context of a struggle. You know, Joshua, I've been trying to say this for years. I mean, I've been trying to get this across. People aren't getting it. I'm not kidding. I know it's important. Will you help me find, and this is the phrase they use consistently, public figures or that great grandmother archetype. They will say, Joshua, help me find the best way to say it. Yeah, I, 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 it's a great way. I mean, I've, I've fancied dabbling for ages, Joshua, but if you can't come up with a plot, why not use somebody else's life story and take it from there, which I find that really interesting. I want to talk about your own, your new book uh, in just a second, but the, the life of a ghostwriter presumably means you, you've got to go until now under the radar. How frustrating is it for you when a book flies off the shelves and somebody else is there doing the, the signings and all that kind of thing? 
for many ghostwriters, I can imagine it would be frustrating. There would be a, a wee bit of envy at minimum. But in my case, I never planned on being a ghostwriter. It happened upon me by accident, actually. I was many years ago promoting a couple novels that had been published under my own name, Fiction, years ago. And people who read them enjoyed them so much, they wanted me to write their, not their novels, but their memoirs. But they wanted it to read like novels. And they said, will you help me with my book, Joshua? And I said, oh, okay, sure, I guess. And that's how I began ghostwriting. And so it was as if... Go, go on, finish that sentence. Sorry, Joshua. Yes, yes. So so it was as if I was now entrusted with being a a, a midwife, whereas I had already become a parent myself. Uh, you, you see, I'd already been there and done that. Yeah. I, I, but how, for the uninitiated, how do they find you? Do they, would, would someone, let's say, you know, a, 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 a tech entrepreneur might say, I want my storytelling up, but I want the guy who wrote this book because I love this book. How would they know that that book was ghostwritten in the first place if you've done your job so well? The acknowledgements. Flip all the way to the very end of the oh, book okay. to the acknowledgements. Oh. And it will say, usually not in the first paragraph, maybe buried somewhere in the third or fourth paragraph. Oh, and I'd also like to thank, and then they'll say, my book coach, or quote unquote, my editor, or my writing partner, or my collaborator, okay. something like that. Or they'll just name the individual by name. This is how I've been featured in the acknowledgements a number of times. And that's a little hint to those who are in the know, yeah. who is the ghostwriter behind the book. Do you have anything in your contract to say, I need this form of words in the acknowledgements? Because yeah, I'm just I'm thinking people might push you to one side so they can take all the credit. It does vary from, from case to case. Um, but there have been those who will explicitly state, Joshua Lysak was my ghostwriter. If you want a great book like this one, you should hire him. Yeah. Have you, <laughs> ever, is, have you ever demanded Joshua to be on the cover, albeit in very small type? I have not yet to date, no. Yeah. But you, they could be, I don't know, Donald, written by Donald Trump with Joshua Lysak, very small. And that, that might be the next step. Yes, that would be a fun a fun book project for sure. Yeah. Uh, listen, this book you've written then, So Good They Call You a Fake, what, what's the essence of it? Yes, the point of this book is that we've reached a new equilibrium in the economy. It used to be that if you were so good at what you do in your profession, in your career, that was good enough to get noticed, be it a better opportunities in employment or be it more clientele. But because of social media and this proliferation of free and low-cost technologies, anyone in any industry can pass themselves on as being great. And so the bar has been raised that those of us who want to become well-known in our industry and collect those great opportunities, we need to be so good that envious competitors and random internet haters and naysayers, so they say to us, well, obviously that's fake. You're cheating. It's not possible to be that good. You're Photoshopping that. And that negative attention, we're able to transmute into positive press, greater opportunities, okay. and additional clientele. So you, what you're saying is, I, I, if I paraphrase you, I can make you sound great. Exactly. So are you, is that, is that, are, are you saying now, that is this a manual for people who want to write their own stories? So you can't possibly write everyone's autobiography. You, you're far too busy. So is this a shortcut for us all? Writing a book is one of the things that's covered inside of my book, So Good They Call You a Fake. But we also talk about how to create other offers, other information products, programs, services, and so on that encapsulate your expertise. So whether you want to be a consultant or you want to become an entrepreneur in your space or you want to keep an, an 8 to 5, 9 to 5 position, it's the book that can help you maximally monetize your expertise and leverage all kinds of attention. But you have to have, I, just to end, Joshua, I suppose you've got to have some level of expectation management because can everyone, does everyone have a book in them? Is every life story worth 250 pages? It may be unpopular for me to say so, but I do not believe that that is the case. No, I do not believe that everyone. You've obviously met some of the people I have. <laughs> yes, I may have had a few of them as clients over the years. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, you try your level best. But the, the, have you ever met somebody as a commission and gone away and thought this isn't possible? There is a story about one such person in So Good They Call You a Fake. Yes, those those readers listening who, who've already read read the book will, will know her as Misty. And uh, Misty, it's quite a story. 
I, I just want to end as well. Be, be, the book, you know, the, the, a good book is a great book, and a, a, you know, we, we, we'll always pick up thrillers and things like that. But is there a fashion in writing as well, Joshua? Are you trying to find clients who will hit the next? Because the, you know, the, there's been a there's been a separate, sh- but in this country anyway, there's been separate areas of bookshelves for people with tragedy tales. Talks about people who've had very diffi- difficult lives. Is that is what's the next big thing when it comes to w- real people telling their own stories? Do you think? What I'm seeing both with my U.S. based clients and U.K. based clients is what we're seeing emerge as the memoir mashup, the memoir mashup. This is where the person is telling episodes from their life, be it in pop science or psychology or a self-help management leadership category, regardless of the category. Yeah. But it's episodes of the person's life that are, that are wrapped into how to's okay. and how not to do's. Yes, I get, I get that. So, 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 so we're learning, but from their experiences, really, and we're getting a bit of everything. Uh, look, Joshua, good luck with the book. It's been really nice talking to you. Thanks for your time. Sure thing. It's been a blast. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua Lysick. There, so good. They call you a fake. Is his uh, book? I'm sure it'll make everyone look twice now when they're picking a, be- a bestseller off the shelf. 